morning. What a pretty day. Blue sky and sunshine. A lot better day than it was yesterday. Yesterday it was windy, snowy, cold, miserable. But um, not very warm out here today. <laughs> so, much as I would have rather have done the leather work yesterday and uh, gone and played today, I think the leather work is the, the plan for today too. I gotta start getting some stuff made. But, uh, man, a day like this, I'd sure rather go play. Got this rattlesnake skin. It's been dried for quite a while. And it's going to get ruined if I don't do something with it. So, I'll make a quick hat band. Need to make a, a straight edge on this chunk of leather I got. And then I can use my strap cutter. Snake skin hat bands are actually really easy. That you need to have, they're not very durable, and uh, they work good for hat bands because there's not a lot of wear and tear on them. And uh, you have to have some sort of a backing because they're really, really paper thin. In fact, they're worse than paper thin. Crate paper, maybe. <laughs> okay, so now that edge is straight. And then this thing. That's a strap cutter. It's got a kind of a ruler on here. You can measure how wide you need it to be. An inch, more or less, is pretty good for a snake any wider than that and it it looks really funny need a new razor blade I think this one's getting really dull I'll get it started here you really want to be careful with these because the blade is facing toward you and it can get you bad. If you were to whoosh, like that against your arm, I mean that thing's poking up through there. It'd be probably a doctor visit and a lot more money than your mic on the hat band. So that gives me an inch wide strap. So this, like I said, is paper thin and crunchy. You don't really need, for a hat band, you really don't need to have it tanned. Uh, I think it might even be better if it wasn't tanned because the glue doesn't stick as well. And a fresh hide or it might even work with one that's been wetted down again. Oh, it's dark in here. Um, they have a natural kind of a stickiness to them. It's almost like a glue, and you can just about get away without using any glue. I use barge cement. If I wet it down a little bit, it'll form around this piece of leather a lot better and stay better. Now, anyway, I'll find my glue. I don't know what I did with that. I just saw it. Always somewhere. Alright, I found my glue. It was in the other room. I started to make a uh, canteen. I haven't got very far on it. And I didn't do that on camera. But uh, barge cement is probably the best. This can, I've refilled this thing so many times. The brush broke off. It's soldered back on. And uh, the reason I keep doing that is because I like this brush that's inside the can. Uh, makes it really easy and handy. It doesn't dry out. But <laughs> it's about worn out. I've had this for a lot of years. I need to probably get a new one. I've been 
barge cement is expensive. When I first started doing leather work, a can like this was about eight bucks. Now I think it's twenty-five, thirty. Um, a gallon of it used to be, I don't know, twenty bucks, twenty-five bucks. Uh, last time I looked, it was over fifty. So you know, all this stuff, it's just getting out of hand. <laughs> it makes it really hard to make any kind of a profit on this because the materials cost you so much and people are only willing to pay so much for things I don't blame them so anyhow um, running this under the tap water really quick it's soft and flexible again and you don't want it real wet because it that won't stick either so I'll dry this off so it's just sort of damp and then glue it down. Okay, so I'll let that sit off to the side a little bit and dry just a little bit more while I paint this up. I usually, you know, leather has a has a flesh side where the hair used to be and a or a grain side they call it where the hair used to be and a flesh side where the flesh the meat used to be and this side the flesh side is always more fuzzy uh, that helps hold on to the glue so I usually try to put the snake skin away from that and for whatever reason it just naturally kind of wants to curl that direction anyway so for a hat band I mean it's gonna be like this permanently anyway so that's just perfect so anyhow I will paint this up with good old barge cement and <laughs> what I started to say about this stuff getting expensive um, it's gotten to the point I don't buy actual barge cement anymore. I've been build, buying, uh, they call it Weldwood DAP contact cement. I think it's pretty much the same thing and it's quite a little bit less money. So I just refill this can with that. Like I say, this little brush that's in the lid <clears throat> really very handy. If you had a regular brush and it wasn't sitting in the glue all the time it would dry up and make it a mess where this where it's sitting down inside of there it doesn't do that all right so next thing you want to do let this set for just a minute the contact cement's kind of strange stuff it works better after it's been exposed to the air for a few minutes the um, it gets kind of tacky, otherwise it doesn't stick quite as well. Spread the snake skin out. And about the center of the pattern on the snake, you can see, hopefully on the camera, these little circles. That's the snake skin pattern. I'm going to put that, center it pretty much right down those round pieces. Like so. Then, this chunk of leather is wanting to twist on me for some reason. And then I paint up this side. Then just fold over the edges. Be better if I let it set, but I'm not going to. 
Fold over the edges right over the top of that leather strap. So, just on one side. And then, cut the belly scales off right down the center. Same thing on the other side. Most of these leather videos, I speed them up because it's so time consuming and so boring. It just takes too long. Where this one is pretty much real time. I turn it off when I'm getting something. But, uh, well, that's kind of close. I don't know if you can see that that well. Anyway, the snakeskin hat bands are really easy to make and really quick. And you just go down the center again and Cut off the belly scales. By belly scales, I mean the big ones here. Okay, so then, if it doesn't fill in all the way, if there's gaps in the back side, it really doesn't matter, because the outside is what you're after. This side will be against the hat anyway. And this one... This should be pretty close to the right length for a hat band. So what I'll do next, this end with the with the rattle on it. It's too thin for this band anyway. So I'll just cut it off right about there. Just like that. That rattle, that isn't much of one. I'll go ahead and cut that off. And I got a little can over here, a little container. And I got a bunch of them in. It just goes in there. Okay, so then this side, my leather isn't square. I'll just cut that off square with the edge of the snake. This is a half inch grommet tarp tent type grommet so I use a 9 16 inch rat drive punch figure out where the edge is going to be about there and punch a hole Throw that in there like so. 
the washer end goes over the top of that. And then you got this setting tool that goes to there, and then this one goes on this other side. Just like that. And do the same thing on the other end. And then I don't want to dull my good leather knife, so I'll use my skin and knife here. You just trim that off right on the edge of that grommet. So, actually, I might have messed up. This might be too long. Grab me a hat and see if it'll even fit. The hat I've got and I normally wear, I've been wearing for probably 10 years or more. This will be my replacement. But that's a ways off yet. That one I got still got plenty of life in it. And I made a snakeskin band for this one. This color, I kind of like that. Anyway, take this off fast. And uh, see if that one I just made will fit. Might have made it too long. <laughs> it is too long. That's okay. I can cut it off and shorten it a little bit. I just ruined a grommet though. That's better. Okay, so to seal in those scales, waterproof it and give it a little shine, and give it a quick blast of some clear paint. Now this little strap cutter, it goes on your finger, kind of handy. It's called an Australian Strander. It does the same thing as the big one, only miniature. It'll go up to about a half inch wide is all. I want this somewhere, somewhere around three eighths or so. Maybe, maybe even a little shorter. Take and fold that over and cut a slit in it. Like that. This goes, the split end goes through there. And the tail end goes through that hole. Just like that. And then I can try to whittle this down. You gotta be careful not to cut too much off because it gets too um, too weak. I cut that as close to that split as I can. And this one goes back through there like that. Through here again. That covers up that tail piece. And it goes 
through here and around here back up through there through here like that and that is a that's the same knot you would use to tie your saddle on um, a lot of people use a buckle nowadays but that's that's not a saddle knot okay then I go back through again go around this side back up through here and then back through both that knot that one and through this one if I can get it back through that one there we go just like that that gives you a little bit of adjustment you can unlace that and move it tighter if you need to or a little bit bigger if you need to this I don't look too bad. This tail is much too long, but I want to leave enough where it's adjustable for wider. So I'll trim that off. They can always shorten that later if they want to, or leave it the way it is. Anyway, thanks for watching and have a great day. See you tomorrow, hopefully, if I can get something else made. <laughs> Pretty day. I'd like to I'd like to go do something else, but I better stick with it, I guess. See ya.